After a spectacular camp at the main Cape Melville Beach, where among other things we enjoyed stunning sunrises and sunsets, we now find ourselves at Ninian Bay, also located within the boundaries of Cape Melville. Here we're camped out at Ninian Bay. It's the morning and we're all packing up now. It's a beautiful little bay, calm as anything. Dolphins feeding out in front, sharks, turtle heads poking up everywhere. What you've got is you've got this sand. Now there's Hakeem going to throw a lure in. You've got this sand and then you've got this rock shelf. And then after the rock shelf, it drops down into a sandy and then a mud bottom. Just a short little beach too. There's a creek right down there that you can't get across. And down at this end, where the track comes out, there's a rocky headland. And you obviously can't get around that. This is uh, late July. July 23rd to be exact, and the track in looked like nobody had been on it this season. So this is not a very frequently used area. So if you're looking for isolation and no other bugger, this is the place you want to be. The boot scooters are all packed up. We're going to be leaving together, and we're going to head north to Bathurst Bay, and they're going to push through and get onto the OTT and head to the tip. So we've had a couple of good nights together, but uh, time to separate and do our own thing. Good morning. It is Saturday the 24th of July. We've just packed up camp. So we're that means we've done two weeks? Two weeks on the road, yeah. yeah we're, we're still with the scooters and um, we'll be pushing through to the Bathurst Head turn off. From there we'll make a call whether we've got to go through to Musgrave and get some fuel. Phil's a bit light on and the scooters are really light on so we may need to give them some fuel to get through to there. We're just leaving Ninian Bay. This is the track obviously that we came in yesterday on and now we're leaving. It's quite overgrown. Lots of pinstripes on our cars. Jacob did just say over the radio at least he'll have matching pinstripes on the other side of his car. We've just come off the Ninian Bay track and now we're on to the Wakuka Melville track heading back towards Wakuka. That track was 17 kilometers in and we traveled about 15 kilometers an hour so count yourself an hour to get back into Ninian Bay. We've just left w Wakuka and we're heading towards the Bathurst Bay turn off um, heading in a westerly direction. This is the main drag that goes down through Cow Power and then out to Musgrave. So what we'll do there is we'll pull up. Uh, Jacob's running really low on fuel, so um, we may need to give him some of our fuel. We'll get up to our turn off and we'll make a call. Everything going well, we're enjoying it. This is the first time we've been on the dirt for, on a dirt road for some time. We're doing 60 kilometers an hour and it feels like we're doing 160 kilometers an hour. And we've got 60 liters of fuel in jerry cans amongst all of the Jaffa crew. And they will need some to get out there running on fumes. So we will work out who needs what and we'll share it out. But um, the Jaffa crew will be okay for fuel. We've managed it um, well. We knew where we were going. We knew what our consumption was. All the rest of that sort of stuff. We'll help out our friends. We will help out our friends. They helped us out with bringing the old nader. They surely did. Yeah. Absolutely. And Phil's a happy camper because he's got a um, alternator that's charging fully now. And he's got three batteries that are completely filled. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Where are we? We're at the intersection of Bathurst Heads and... Somewhere. Oh, the Wakuka Road. The mm. Wakuka Lakefield Road, what do you call it? Maybe. Cool. Well, why don't we, you and I will give up ours, like for argument's sake, and, just, and that way then we keep two cans, because Phil's just, still got a can, Yep. and Archie's still got a can. Yeah, yeah. Because those two cans yeah, may need to go into Phil's truck. Yep. That makes some sense. How much stone and wood's coming my way, brother? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whiskey drinker myself. <laughs> There's our Bathurst Heads sign and Bathurst Head track. 
And if we just walk down to the track, croc signs, they're everywhere up here. Cal Power Land Trust. Here's our gate. And on the gate is a big bloody padlock. So Bathurst is closed to us. Looks like there's fresh wheel tracks there, but not for us, I guess. And there's no bush gate to let us through either. So we're definitely locked out of this one. So this is the end of July 21. If you're thinking of coming up here around about this time, no, you won't get in. Oh, oh, oh! We didn't see me! Reset oh. button, reset! <laughs> All right. That is out. Is out. Okay, so we're going to Lakefield, so we need even, we need even less fuel then, is what that means. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep your we got CB, Kim. Um, what the hell? This is how we roll. Jacob's getting a can. They're walking shame, no. It's all good. I'm giving you a brand new, nice, clean, bloody plastic can, and you get me a rattly old bloody steel one. I have, and it's empty too. <laughs> it's all good. I'm just pulling his chain. <laughs> Fill her up. We don't know where we're going now. <laughs> we're winging it. We're winging it. We know we're going to Lakefield. That's about it. Yeah, even if it's like, you know, something looks good, we, we just pull up. We just pull up, exactly. Yeah, because that looks, the any river road looks a pretty mine. It sure does. There'll be caravans and every, mm -hmm. you know, towing boats and all sorts of shit up there. Yeah. Well, after getting blocked out of Bathurst Headlands, or Bathurst Bay and Headlands, we're now heading towards Lakefield National Park and we're going to try and find a couple of small, reasonably infrequently used tracks and see if we can camp up near Billabong and maybe do a little bear fishing. Alright, we've just arrived at the Kel Power Crossing. We're just going to idle through the crossing. We were here six years ago and had lunch and it was a fair bit more water here last time so yeah, strange. So I can see the edge. Hey. It drops off right here, so. Hang on, my side? It's probably about two foot. Yeah, that's alright. Just got a center line. It's pretty cool. You can see the edge, can't you? Yep, you can see the edge. I don't know what's on the left. Archibald vehicle through. There's always that guy. <laughs> Go, Terry. Now we have Phil and Robin coming. Lakefield National Park now just on a dirt road doing about 70 or 80 kilometers an hour and we're heading to a campsite called Basin Hole. Don't know anything about it other than it's a designated camp area. So we'll check it out and if it's not to our taste then we'll try something different but that's a starting point anyway. All right now we're on a secondary road which is heading toward Basin Hole. No one coming your way Arch. Now we're on a second. Uh, now we're on a secondary. Road. Now we're on a secondary road heading towards Basin Hole, and it's 18 kilometers away. Well, we went to Basin Water Hole, and that was all booked out. So now on to the next campsite, which we're not exactly sure what it is, but we know we're heading in the right direction. Across Slady Water Hole. Ah, uh, yeah, Slady Creek, wasn't it? Uh, Slady Creek. I guess. Yeah, I think this is Slady Creek. There's not a creek happening right now. No, there's not a stitch of water in it. We did hear from some campers back at Cow Power Crossing 
that the reason that the Bathurst Bay was closed was because of uh, due to wet weather. So it must be because of the damaged tracks, not because of any water laying around because it's dry as anything here at the moment. This is Jam Tin Creek Crossing and it's got water in it anyway, in places, a couple of water holes. It's pretty stagnant and buggy. We're still on the road to top whipped handle water hole. And all of a sudden our grassy plains have turned into this dense little, I don't know, almost a rainforest. Almost. A dry forest. Cool little river. Pulled up camp. We're at Bottom Whip Hole Camp in Lakefield National Park, which is basically down in the riverbed of the Normanby River. And we're sort of scattered amongst the paper barks along the riverbank itself. Had a couple of mozzies so far. It's only five in the afternoon, but they could get ferocious tonight. And if you can believe it, there's shit tickets left behind by some feral pig. Jeez, I'd love to get my hands on people like that. And here it is, the Normanby River. Full of crocs, apparently. We haven't seen any yet, thankfully. If you're watching this video, we still haven't seen one. And I haven't been taken. It's flowing quite well here. And I have tasted it. It's fresh water. I thought it might have been brackish or maybe tidal, but it's actually not. It's flowing at a decent pace, too. Jill's cooking tea. What's on the menu, hun? Tuna spaghetti. Tuna spaghetti. Sounds lovely. It's got onions in it. I'm, I'm in. Coming over to the Archie camp. Hello. What's for tea? Oh, nice. And roast vegetables. Oh, nice. So good. Leftovers, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe. maybe. <laughs> okay, I do. <laughs> What's on the menu, Robin? Tonight we're having eye fillet steak, Ooh. and then we have baby potatoes sliced into scallops, fried up with an egg. Oh, mate! <laughs> Far out, I'm having a tough decision between the leftover camp. <laughs> and maybe for dessert we might have some cream rice. Oh, far yes. out. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Hello all. People always ask us when we're traveling, work colleagues, friends, what we normally eat when we're traveling. Do we have tin food, two minute noodles? And the answer is no. We basically eat the same as what we eat at home for dinner. Maybe chuck in some of those items for your quick dinners for at night when you pull in really late, but otherwise we just eat exactly what we eat at home. So we normally have some pre-cooked meals and our meat all cry back. It all goes in the freezer section. So this is the freezer section here of our Waco. Everything we normally have labelled, so that's pre-cooked beef stroganoff. We have things like beef chow mein, curry chicken, and just all your sausages, steak, chicken pieces frozen veggies um, so basically you don't have to skimp. skimp when you're camping you can eat what you have at home and also you need to have ice for your champagne you cannot go without ice for your champagne so that's basically the freezer section same within the fridge i mean really there's not a lot goes into the fridge when it comes to lunches and that maybe just mostly your cheese we only put in our drinks for what we're having that day, so you don't have to load up your fridge. Just have in what you're going to have for that day and just restock it every morning before you set off for travelling. So that's basically it. So don't skimp when you're camping. Eat whatever you eat at home. It's not hard, just a lot of preparation before you leave, but it all makes it worthwhile when you're out having a long day travelling. You've got a nice hearty meal for dinner. That's all.
Good tiles. We knew we were camped on a tidal river, the Normanby River. The tide came up last night. <coughs> Pardon me. And check this out. There's the top of the tide line. There's our table leg. It was pretty close. It's a full moon last night, so no doubt a king tide. But holy cow, that was close. I did when I was filming last night. I had a snake encounter of the close kind. It was quite scary. I almost stepped on him. I was doing some filming of the sunset. Well, there was bugs all right. They even drove you into the tent without going to the campfire. <laughs> there was many, many bugs. Yeah. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday! To you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Happy oh, birthday! Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, and something is something oh. special. Oh, thank you so much. Oh God, isn't that beautiful? Oh, I spent hours making that joke. <laughs> Was it the one you made on the way up too? <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> hide myself from the bugs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's gorgeous. I love the color and the, and the wool. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. Oh, love. Didn't have to get me anything. I know you probably may not have a Pandora charm, but you've got to have this charm. <laughs> oh, friends are the family we choose. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much. Try not to cry. <laughs> Thank you. I'm pulling. <laughs> I'm choked up. We love you. We love you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's beautiful. I love it. I know. I know, it's a, I know it's a little bit hot for that right now, but on the way home. <laughs> Kim had the same idea. She knit me a scarf on the way too. Oh, I'm not going to freeze. I'll share. Isn't that beautiful? Lovely. Yeah, remember that. Pashmina. Well, yes, it's share with beautiful. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need a pashmina too. Pashmina. Oh, is that your color too? It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it reflects well in my eyes. Oh, well, that's pretty. <laughs> that's pretty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, oh. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're you guys welcome. are wonderful. <laughs> That's just friends. Now we're just leaving our little camp on the Normanby River. Up the hill. Yeah. I was grunting like I was helping or something. <laughs> Over here. Uh, you guys pulling up for camp already? Jeez, we didn't get far. <laughs> oh no. Oh, they're in her chair, maybe. It is, what do we got? Morning. Sunday the 24th of July. I just 25th of July. 25th, my bad. Jill's 25th. birthday. Jill's birthday. Happy birthday, Jill. So Happy we're birthday. um so we just packed up camp. I'm gonna rename it as Mozzie and Insect Camp because there was plenty of mozzies and insects. So now we're heading back out and um, our plan tonight is to pull up somewhere in the vicinity of the Annie River. Which is about two rivers north along the coast from where we are now on the Normanby River. And we're going to check that out as a possible campsite. It looks like it might be popular and if that's the case and we've got caravans and people and all sorts of crap there then we will try and find a four-wheel drive track that can get us out to the beach. Dropping down into a cute little river. In fact, this is probably the Normandy. It's probably the one that we were camped on. We are on the Hahn Crossing. Cars coming from behind. Yeah, we're doing the right-hand turn. Roger. We're on the road towards the Annie River and we just encountered this treeless plain. It's like it's out back Queensland. <laughs> it is. It's like the middle of bringing, I don't know, edge of the Simpson Desert or something. Except there's termite mounds. Yeah. We're now on the track into the Annie River. 
River camping area, which is about two kilometers off the main track. It's all hard, dry clay. You wouldn't want to get caught in here in the rain, I wouldn't think. Turning right into the Annie River camping area, just to check it out. And nobody's home. itself is just a flat paddock. Walking down the track here at the Annie River and have a look at this. I mean holy smokes. It is just an absolute alleyway of shit tickets. Far out. Geez, that annoys me. So we thought we'd take a couple of minutes to have a bit of a whinge and have a bit of a lesson. It's one thing that really annoys every single one of us when we're traveling in remote areas, and that is toilet paper on the track everywhere. And it, it just scars the landscape, and it's not necessary. So Matthew is going to give us a lesson <laughs> on how to deal with poo. <laughs> And we, for that matter, because a lot of the, I'm sure a lot of the toilet paper that we see is just from women um, going out and doing a quick wee, um, doing their business, and then just leaving the toilet paper. And that's it's just not on. We've got a beautiful country here. Let's keep it that way. So, uh, what do you got here, Maddie? Tay, I totally agree with you. Um, as we all know, everyone needs to go to the toilet. It's part of life. Um, majority of people, when they go for a number two, is they dig a hole. But what seems to happen is animals tend to dig up your business and um, the toilet paper gets exposed. So how easy it is for once you've done your business to get rid of the toilet paper. So simply light it up. Just a lighter, paper, it lights up. Simple as that. Burns like crazy. It's in the hole, it's safe. You've got your shovel there. That's it. Once that is gone, burns to nothing, fill your hole in left with black ash yep. yep it's all gone Perfect. that's it simple as that look at that nice and Jill maybe you could flick the camera around and talk to the camera very quickly on what you do as far as a Wii so you know we're driving down the track and you got to have yourself a Wii for guys it's easy we just pull up and have a slash and it's done for girls it's a little bit more challenging but how do you do that without having this stuff end up all over the place what I do, I carry just a sandwich sized Ziploc bag in the door of the truck just right next to me. Toilet paper in there after I do a wee and then burn it, empty it out and burn it at each campsite that we go to. How simple is that? Not a problem at all. You yeah. wouldn't even know you'd be there. Yep. So I guess from the Jaffa crew, you know, we just implore people who are out there enjoying the, you know, the wild places, please look after them, please take care of them, because we don't want to get locked out of them, kicked out of them, and that is so easy to do. We are now past the Annie's Creek Camp, continuing in a, oh, I guess it's a westerly direction towards Five Mile Creek Camp, and it is a slow, windy track. The river's on our right hand side or to the north of us and we're running parallel with it at the moment. We got to the Five Mile Creek camping area and check that out and that was just a bit of a fizzer. We could not get across the Annie River onto the Ch Ten Chain Road which is where we want to go. So we are going to head back out to the main road, recommission at Musgrave, and then head back in and try and get onto the other end of that 10 chain road from Lilyvale. We've recommissioned at Musgrave and back on the track, we're heading north towards Lilyvale. And what, are, what we're going to attempt to do is to get into the Lama Lama National Park and try and find a beach camp. We couldn't get any track conditions, we couldn't get any information about whether that's even possible or not, so it's a 
little bit of a Fakawi tour, but we'll see how we go. Fakawi tour being, we're the Fakawi. Some great beaches along this stretch of the road, according to the satellite. But despite our many attempts to access the beach, we encountered locked gate after locked gate. On the surface, it certainly appears as though the traditional owners want to keep tourists out. We're heading out through a small bush track that we found that we think gets us out to the beach. But we're not certain. And we're looking good on that satellite? Yep, we're bang on on the satellite, mate. Yeah, so we're picking our way through the mangroves and whatever these things are, mangrovey looking things, to try and get to the coast. Yeah, just went past that access, guys. The big signs is locked gate ahead. Yeah, mirror's in, and don't leave your windows up. Make a dog in the eye. Oh, we had a, a thorn go into his eye today. Wow.